pleased to introduce to the stage Lou Hang, CEO of Laris. Hello, guys. Uh, good morning. I've been uh, talking about this before uh, in the other ITWs, but not shorten the presentation and make the point more straight and uh, easy to understand. The subject is revealing the real worth of IPv4. So this is really probably the biggest opportunity hiding the pain site for telecommunication and the cloud providers for our industry in generations. So IPv4, as many of you know it, it's just a number you use for your device to connect to the internet. And uh, any devices needs a unique identifier to be connected. And uh, hence, we have IP addresses. And IPv4 is limiting numbers. It's actual usable IPv4 address is a little over 3 billion IPs. But today, with cell phone smart technology, Globally, we have more than four or five billion devices connected to the internet. Therefore, it's created a scarcity of the identifiers. And because you can't be connected to the internet without an IP address. Therefore, an IP address is a service enabler for you to be able to get online. So because of it's a service enabler, it's very much like the location of a Manhattan shop. The reason why the shop can generate that much revenue is because it's a central location. So generally, 30% of the revenue are going to the rent. But today, IP address only count 0.1% of its services enables. The current IPv4 market valuation is $200 billion. If it's unleashed value, I believe it can be 300 more, $60 trillion. And hear me out why. So IPv4 today is hugely undervalued. And the reason for it being hugely undervalued is because of a couple of things. First of all, it lacks ownership. IPv4 today, its ownership are not recognized by the regional internet registry and it's not recognized by the businesses as well. Well, it's traded billions of dollars each year, but we don't even recognize its ownership properly. The reason being, the policies in the regional internet registry says it's just an identifier you register in their database, therefore it does not come with ownership. Why they say that? Because the regional internet registry based on their decision making on the communities. And the only one who actually participate in those communities are the techies. So it's a decision made by technical community in the IRs, not the actual business leaders and the owners of ISPs. And the operation, just like the nature of any technical community, they prioritize the operation over asset values. Therefore, IPv4 was artificially put under value with lower liquidity. So when you buy an IP address, you have to hold it for a year or two before you can transfer it. So the liquidity is artificially kept low. And then the last thing is a need test. The regional internet registry wants to test your network before you'll be able even to buy the asset, all of which restrict the asset value of IPv4. And how do we unlock IPv4's value? We need to raise awareness. It's really simple, right? We have a golden opportunity of a limited asset, the, probably the first ever limited asset in our industry in the past 30 years. Because if you look at bandwidth, look at capacities, they're never a limit. That's why most of us operate in a very low operation profit margin because in a capitalist world, no scarcity means no profit. But IPv4 is really the first time we encounter something with true scarcity, but somehow we leave this biggest asset of our generation in the pain side and not do anything about it. And most of the CEOs and the CFOs of telecoms and cloud providers, while they're sitting with billions of dollars worth of IP address today, they're not aware the true value of their holding. Don't get me wrong, I mean, even at today's suppressed valuation of IPv4, IP address counting on some of the largest telecoms high percentage of their market capitalization. 
I've done some brief calculations with British Telecom is probably 5 to 10%. With Cogen, it's uh, at one point was over 80% of their market cap was on IPv4 addresses. This is under dysfunctional market. And imagine if the market would be properly functioned with full liquidity and transparency, IPv4 would be exceeding the market capitalization for most of the telecoms here. We are fighting for 10% growth every year, while we can simply double our market cap by simply participating in the regional internet registry policy process. It's time for us to really wake up on this. This is an untapped asset with vast potential. But even with its current state, it's already a huge percentage of market cap of many companies here. It's amazing how we managed to ignore such opportunity for the past decades. And all we need to do is participate in the policy process of regional internet registries. Talk to your NOC people, talk to your technical team, ask them who is voting in the regional internet registry board elections. And talk to your people in the NOC that what a policy you are making for the IP addresses. Why you make it restrictive? Why don't you allow the ownership of IP addresses so fundamental to the survival of every cloud and telecom here to be owned by the cloud company and telecom company here? We want every ISP, every cloud provider to own their own IP addresses. And we want a decision making about uh, the transaction and the liquidity of IP addresses being done by the CEOs and the true owners of those assets. And the problem here is that those decisions for the past three decades has been left over with the NOC team, with technical people. But if you left that decision to your technical people, they're never going to make this decision in the interest for the company because for them, have the IR on the IPs is very much in their interest because they have a club of people and within their community, they can change the job easily. It's like leave the house ownership and the vote in your house association to your gardeners. You never do that. Of course, the gardener will vote the association on your house. But will you allow the housing association on your house or you actually want to own the house? So this is a, probably the greatest opportunity we have here. And all we need to do is some very simple things. Particularly in the policy process, tell the people about the opportunity. It's already a large percentage of your market cap. Imagine the opportunity to double, triple, 100 times it. Stop worrying about 10% growth next year. You can have 10 times growth in the next five years by simply supporting a free market for IPv4. And just today, I mean, everybody probably see the news here, Bitcoin's reach 100K. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a crypto, right? It's a limited number. It's just like IPv4, but Bitcoin doesn't have real utility. IPv4 has a real utility. It's embedding everybody's devices you currently get online with. There's no reason why IPv4 is worth far less than a crypto. We have no real undervaluing value with it. It's a perfect digital land and it's a perfect digital asset. So my today's presentation is all about awareness. I want people to spread words. Go to your company, check how many IP address your guys has, time the market price, 30 to $50 per IP, and see what's the percentage of the market cap for your company is concentrated with IPv4. And imagine and suppress the market, you already have this, if it's gonna be freed up, if we have ownership, if we have complete liquidity, what is gonna happen? Think about it. Okay, well, that's it for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much.